You're standing in line at your favorite coffee shop. Tuesday morning, the usual rush, but something's different today. Behind the counter, there's no barista, no tired college student trying to pay rent, no friendly face asking how you want your latte. Instead, there's a five foot eight humanoid robot, white and black chassis, glowing sensors where eyes should be, hands that move with unsettling precision as it grinds beans, steams milk, and writes your name on the cup in perfect handwriting. You look around, everyone's staring at their phones. Nobody seems surprised, nobody seems to care. And then it hits you. This isn't just one coffee shop. This isn't just one robot. This is everywhere. This is everyone's job. This is America. And Elon Musk's Optimus robots have replaced every single worker in the country. Welcome to a world that's closer than you think. A world that's already being built in warehouses in Texas and California right now, today, as we speak. What does that America actually look like? And more terrifyingly, are we ready for it? It starts small. That's how it always starts. The first Optimus robots hit Tesla factories in late 2025. Just a few hundred of them. They're doing the boring stuff. Loading sheet metal, moving parts, the repetitive tasks that hurt human backs and minds. Workers actually feel relieved. Good, they say. Let the robots do that stuff. We'll focus on the real work. But here's the thing about technology. It doesn't stay in its lane. By early 2026, production ramps up. 10,000 robots per month rolling off assembly lines. Then 20,000. Then 50,000. Elon Musk tweets that Optimus is ahead of schedule. The stock market explodes. Investors throw billions at the vision. And companies across America start doing the math. An Optimus robot costs $30,000. One payment. That's it. No health care. No vacation days. No sick leave. No complaints. No lawsuits. It works 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, for years. Maybe decades. A minimum wage worker costs $35,000 a year, plus benefits, plus training, plus the risk they might quit after you've invested in them. The math isn't complicated. It's brutal. The transformation happens faster than anyone predicted, faster than anyone thought possible. Amazon is first. Of course they are. Their warehouses are already half automated. By mid-2026, they announce a complete transition. 200,000 human workers receive severance packages and career counseling. 200,000 Optimus robots take their place. Productivity doubles overnight. Shipping speeds increase. Costs plummet. Customer satisfaction hits record highs. Other companies watch and panic. If they don't automate, they can't compete. It's not even a choice anymore. It's survival. Fast food chains are next. McDonald's, Burger King, Starbucks. By the end of 2026, walk into any major franchise and you'll see robots flipping burgers, taking orders, managing inventory. Perfectly, efficiently, without a single human in sight. Construction sites transform into choreographed symphonies of mechanical precision. Optimus robots frame houses in days that used to take weeks. They work through rain, through snow, through darkness. The only sound is the hum of electric motors and the click of power tools. Grocery stores, gas stations, retail shops. One by one, they fall to the Optimus wave. Self-checkout was just the beginning. Now the stalkers are robots. The managers are robots. Even security is handled by machines that never blink, never sleep, never miss a thing. By 2027, the transformation reaches places people thought were safe. Hospitals start deploying Optimus units to change bedpans, deliver medications, transport patients. They're not replacing doctors yet, but the nurses, the orderlies, the support staff, they're vanishing. And then it comes for the office workers. The unemployment numbers tell a story that feels like fiction. 
but it's not. 5% unemployment, then 10, then 20, then 30. By late 2027, 40 million Americans have lost their jobs to Optimus robots. The government calls it a transition period. Economists call it creative destruction. Regular people call it a nightmare. The strange part? Life looks better on the surface. Products are cheaper than ever. Your groceries cost half what they used to. Your Amazon orders arrive in hours. Construction booms. Infrastructure projects that would have taken years are completed in months. The efficiency is breathtaking. But efficiency has a human cost. Walk through a suburban neighborhood at 2 in the afternoon. Every other driveway has a car in it. Not because people are working from home, because there's nowhere to work. John, who spent 20 years as a foreman on construction sites, sits on his couch scrolling job boards that have nothing to offer. His skills mean nothing when robots can build better, faster, safer. Maria, who managed a retail team of 15 people, watches her savings account drain as she applies to hundreds of positions that don't exist anymore. The government implements emergency universal basic income. $24,000 a year for every adult citizen. It's enough to survive. Barely. Rent, food, utilities. That's it. No vacations, no savings, no future. And here's the cruel irony. Americans have never had more free time, and they've never been more miserable. Because here's what nobody talks about when they dream about a world without work. Humans aren't just workers. Work gives us identity, purpose, a reason to get out of bed. What do you do? It's the second question we ask when meeting someone. It's how we understand ourselves and each other. Teacher, nurse, engineer, electrician. It's not just a job, it's who we are. Take that away and something breaks. Mental health crises explode. Depression diagnoses triple. Suicide rates climb. Therapists, ironically some of the few humans still working, are overwhelmed. Communities that were built around shared work collapse. The friendships forged in warehouses and kitchens and construction sites? Gone. People retreat into their homes, into screens, into virtual worlds where they can pretend to matter. Dating apps see a strange new trend. People lie about having jobs. They invent careers, companies, responsibilities. Because I collect universal basic income doesn't exactly inspire romance. Protests break out. Not riots, exactly. More like desperate gatherings of people demanding the right to contribute, to be useful, to matter. In Detroit, 10,000 people march to a Tesla facility chanting, We want to work. The Optimus robots stand silently at the gates, sensors tracking every movement, completely indifferent to human desperation. The images go viral. The world watches America unravel. But something unexpected starts happening, something even Elon Musk didn't predict. Americans start creating, not because they have to, because they need to. Underground makerspaces <laughs> explode in every city. People build furniture by hand, not because it's efficient, because it's human, because it's theirs. Art flourishes, music, painting, writing, sculpture, not for money, not for fame, for meaning, for the pure act of creating something a robot can't replicate. Community gardens spring up everywhere, growing food the old way, slowly, imperfectly, together. Sports leagues, amateur theater groups, book clubs, debate societies. People find purpose in connection, in competition in the messy, inefficient, beautiful act of being human together. A strange renaissance emerges from the ruins. The economy is automated, but culture. Culture becomes more human than ever. Some people thrive. They discover passions they never had time for. They write novels, compose music, start movements. But others? They wither, because not everyone can find purpose without structure. 
Not everyone can self-actualize without external validation. America splits into two nations. Not by geography, by psychology. Those who can create their own meaning. And those who need it given to them. By 2029, the transformation is complete. Optimus robots have replaced roughly 60% of American workers. 70 million jobs gone. 70 million people searching for purpose in a world that no longer needs their labor. Elon Musk gives an interview. He's asked if he has any regrets. Regrets, he says, looking genuinely confused. We've solved scarcity. We've freed humanity from drudgery. This is the greatest gift we could give civilization. And he's not entirely wrong. Poverty has plummeted. Hunger is rare. Housing is abundant. The robots build faster than we can occupy the structures. But the interviewer asks the question everyone's thinking. What about purpose? What about meaning? Musk pauses. For once, the man with all the answers seems uncertain. That's not a technology problem, he finally says. That's a human problem. We gave you freedom. What you do with it, that's on you. The camera cuts away, but his words linger. Here's the truth that nobody wants to say out loud. The Optimus Revolution isn't coming. It's here, right now, today. Those robots exist. They're being built. They're being deployed. The timeline isn't science fiction. It's the next three to five years. And we're having all the wrong conversations about it. We're debating efficiency and cost. We're celebrating innovation and progress. We're watching stock prices soar. But we're not asking the only question that matters. If machines can do everything better than humans, what are humans for? Not what can we do. What are we for? What is our purpose in a world that doesn't need us to survive? Is it to create, to connect, to love, to struggle, to overcome, to find meaning in the meaningless? Or are we just economic units that have outlived our usefulness? America stands at a crossroads we've never faced before. Every revolution in history replaced some jobs and created others. But what happens when AI and robotics can do the new jobs too? What happens when there's nothing left that we do better than machines? Elon Musk's Optimus robots are just the beginning. The question isn't if they'll replace American workers. It's what Americans become when they do. We have maybe five years to figure out the answer. Five years to redesign education, reimagine society, and rediscover what makes us human beyond our productivity. Five years to decide if we're more than the jobs we do. The robots are coming. They're efficient. They're tireless. They're perfect. But they'll never face the one question that will define the next century of human existence. When you're no longer needed to work, are you still needed at all? The clock is ticking, and 24 months goes by faster than you think. When the last human job disappears, what's left of humanity? Think about it, and don't forget to subscribe. The future has already begun.